Okay. I'm going to just tell you quickly, quickly, uh, some of the reasons why you should pray. I think most of you know, but for the sake of those that may be new, for the sake of those that may be listening later around the world to this uh, broadcast here, I'm going to just quickly, quickly tell you why we pray, you know, because, and I, and I think it's important because see, a lot of quote unquote spiritual people got my big cup of tea. <laughs> keep my voice going for me. Uh, a lot of spiritual people in our time, they feel that they have outgrown, you know, prayer. You find people from, say, even Assemblies of God, Church of God in Christ background, and other, uh, even uh, Black Pentecostal churches and other uh, charismatic type churches, you know, that they somehow have become enlightened. So the need for prayer is no longer there because they've outgrown that now, okay, because they're, they know so much. And uh, so don't outgrow prayer. Don't outgrow prayer. You might outgrow the, 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 the style of prayer that you pray or the stance and the way you do it, but don't outgrow prayer. You need it. It's very powerful. So one of the reasons that we pray is because of our relationship with the Most High. You're getting closer to God. Now, what do you mean closer to God? Let me just clarify that because, see, in, in Christian thinking, and in most religious thinking, we have the idea of God, Elohim, the, you know, the great spirit way out there, right? Okay. And so, yes, it, he, it is out there and it is everywhere, but it is mostly within you. He is within you. And so what I mean closer to God, I'm speaking of not you literally, you know, the more you pray, I'm just, oh, I'm just up there now, just right next to him. No, in consciousness, in consciousness. In other words, prayer is to help you to develop a relationship with the creator. And uh, those of you that are in relationships, have been in a relationship or want to be in a relationship, you know, you have to realize that communication is one of the most important things about the relationship. You've got to be able to communicate. And so if there is no communication or if there is constant miscommunication and you're having arguments and all kinds of stuff like that, that relationship is falling apart really fast, you know, because people in this time now, and I'll just say it, don't have time to deal with drama and mess and other things like that, you know? <laughs> we, you know, the mind is, okay, you know, scratch it, move on to the next, move on to the next. And so in, communication is very important. And prayer is how you communicate with your creator. Prayer is, the, is how you communicate with the most high, okay? Talking, matter of fact, you look in Webster's Dictionary, I believe it says uh, the definition for prayer is talking to yourself. Talking, and I'm going, that is true. That is true. Because, you know, who else are you going to talk to? <laughs> and I tell people, if you don't talk to yourself, you'll go crazy. You know, the world says, if you're talking to yourself, you must be schizophrenic. You must be going crazy. No, if you don't talk to yourself, you will go crazy. You will be insane. You would be like on all kinds of drugs, you know? <laughs> and so prayer is talking to yourself. What self? You're talking to the higher self, talking to the Christ self that is within you. You are talking to yourself. That is one of the reasons why you must pray. And uh, we, we, we need to pray uh, because of that communication. Now, the talking to yourself uh, many times are in words, which is very powerful because you're living in a voice activated reality. You're living in a voice activated reality. Do you understand what I'm saying? That means that your reality and everything that is in this three dimensional world can be activated by what comes out of your mouth. Why is that important? Because Genesis, I believe two seven, and it says in the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim formed man out of the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life or the breath of lives and he became a living soul. So that's the breath of life technology that you use. That means that everything that God is, he breathed within humanity, the breath was the vehicle to carry the force and the power of God within man. Did you hear that? The breath was the vehicle that brought heaven into man. And so when you speak, when you're using your voice to decree things, to declare things, to pray and stuff, you're using that same technology, that breath Trying to breathe in and all of that, right? Okay. To create your realities because you live in a voice activated world system. It's activated by what comes out of your mouth. Of course, thought too. Thought is the genesis of all things, but then it goes down to word. Okay. What you speak. Genesis, as I oftentimes say, and God said, and God said. Remember, we've been talking about the 42 names of God and stuff that is that it encompasses uh, those and God said in the creation uh, story that we're given there. 
So it is so prayer is important because it brings you into a closer relationship, a closer relationship. And you know that if you have a husband, wife or a significant other or your kids or whatever like that, if you're able to talk with each other, you feel closer. Okay. Okay. Some people says, well, I don't feel close to God. I don't feel I'm not making fun of anybody because I've been there many times myself. Maybe it's because you're not talking to him. Or maybe you're miscommunicating, you know, and when you talk this word to him, whoo, he's all ears. Matter of fact, he hears anything anyway, everything anyway. So, but, you know, when you are talking, when you are talking, but I don't feel anything. Talk anyway, talk anyway, talk anyway, pray, pray, pray till you become prayer. Number two, prayer reduces anxiety and frustration. And all of that, matter of fact, it is a science. I, I taught you many years ago about the vagus nerve. And by clasping your hands, you see this in cultures around the world, because it is a science. By clasping your hands like this, even when you're not uttering anything, but literally by clasping your hands like this, it sends a signal from the vagus nerve throughout, which is a part of the uh, parasynthetic nervous system, to throughout your body, and it calms you down. It calms you down. It brings you to a place of peace and anxiety is released. You can be sitting there in the waiting room waiting for a doctor to come and give you some type of report. Double dog dare you just go like this. You don't even have to have close your eyes. You don't even have to be saying anything, but just use that mudra, that, that, that stance there, you know. No one has to know what you're doing. You can't be praying within your mind. And it's going to calm you down because scientifically something's going to happen in your parasynthetic uh, nervous system that will release certain chemicals within your body and brain to cause you to like, take a break, take a break, get yourself somewhere and sit down. <laughs> Remember that, right? Okay, so uh, that's another thing that it does. Okay, prayer shifts the focus from you. Prayer. It shifts the focus from you. In other words, it makes you less selfish because you're praying for other people, okay? You may have major problems going on in your life, major situations happening, you know, and your life, it seems like it's in a hurricane. Everything is being torn up, you know, uh, uh, in your life, the job, the relationship, uh, your spirituality, whatever. And But if you can look outside of yourself and realize that there are people in worse conditions than yours, because there are, there's always, you know, and, so, and pray for them. Something will begin to happen within you and within your situation. So prayer is about shifting the focus from you and looking at other people. It's about giving you a space to have compassion, giving you a space to have compassion. Okay, that was number three. Number four, prayer is about, uh, gratitude thanksgiving the prayer of thanksgiving you know is bringing you to that place of gratitude and thankfulness why do we need that we live in a society where so many people are constantly complaining about this or that or the other and stuff especially in the western world you know we have access to our phones we have customer service we have all of this stuff and something ain't working right the way that we want it to be working even though we paid money for it and it should be working right i'm not saying that you know and but we can easily get on the phone i know me sometime right you know <laughs> can easily get on the phone hey this thing is not working right you know i paid this much money for it and blah 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 and just just go right down the line of of, of telling them why they need to hurry up and fix this yesterday you know and so and so but uh but but this 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 attitude of gratitude in prayer you know okay this is not working the way that it should be working thank you that is in my house my my fridge my microwave my uh stove or whatever the thing is car or whatever thank you for it and it's going to be fixed you know knowing that everything is going to work out it takes you from that space of just you know that that lower vibration of just focusing on the problem and now you're focusing on the solution okay your body physical things going on oh the doctor said this and i feel this or whatever like that you know and so but you enter into that space of gratitude and thanksgiving thanksgiving it, it shifts your whole uh perspective of things because you are thanking uh that you're in a place of gratitude now instead of complaining complaining all right five prayer you need to pray so that you can hear from god okay now i'm not saying that you have to uh that that's the only way because you know 
I remember as a teen, as a kid and stuff like that, I would hear from God. I would hear things and stuff, you know, and new things and stuff. And I wasn't uh, in a space of prayer. It was just something that spirit was doing within me. But after my encounter and uh, in order to build this relationship, we pray, right? We pray. And so we want to hear more clearly from God. So after you pray, after you communicate and you talk and you express your desire, your need and what you want to happen, you make your declarations, your decrees and all of that, then you go within yourself and you listen. Meditation. And now you can hear clearer. Because you got it all out. You got it all out what you need. And however it came out, if it was with tears, if it was with joy, if it was jumping, it was pounding or whatever, however it came out, you got it out. And so after you've done all of that, whether you're praying in tongues, uh, your light language or, or, Eng or your, your native language or whatever, you know, I find myself that when I'm praying in tongues and stuff, the scripture says that, uh, that I don't know how to pray as I should pray. So always pray in the Holy Ghost. So I pray in the Holy Ghost. And I find myself, many of the messages will come while I am praying in tongues. I will start to get revelation. So here is my super conscious, my other conscious mind that is praying, is bypassing my conscious realm that's going on there. And so I'm, my, I'm just praying in tongues. I'm pacing the floor or whatever, or I'm rolling on the floor or I'm, or I'm on my knees, rarely on my knees. That's, I, I, I have to have a different space. I'm in a different space. So I'm usually walking or something, I may be sitting. And while I am praying in tongues, at the same time I'm praying in tongues, all at once I'm hearing something else. I'm getting a message. My tongue, I'm just speaking. And I'm just shouting out and I'm getting messages and I'm getting my notes and stuff and I'm writing down, you know, at the same time. And so it's like two things going on, right? Because see, praying in tongues cause you to bypass the conscious mind and you're tapping into super consciousness to Christ. And you know exactly the scripture says that, that he that prayed in an unknown tongue prayed unto God and uh, no one understands it, how be it he's praying the mysteries of God. And so I'm praying the mysteries and but those mysteries, the Holy Spirit interprets and it becomes messages. I hope you got that because it's very powerful if you if you can get that if you can begin to implement that in your life. Okay, so you want to hear from God. Number uh, six, you you pray so that you can overcome temptation. I know all you people here, you are super sanctified. You never have any uh, any temptations. You never have any uh, uh, challenges and stuff. And you have mastered the flesh and you are just super saints. And uh, you're just God's like, you know, first cousin of somebody, you know, <laughs> you're out there, you know. And uh, But that's not me. That's not me. Like, you know, I realize I am a son of God. I am a son of God. As a matter of fact, I am. Uh, he says, don't you know that you're God's? I realize that. But I realize that there is yet in this three-dimensional expression of me, there is a lot of this flesh. There's a lot of the carnality and things like that. And so, uh, and in that carnality, in that flesh, I yet deal with the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. The very three things that Yeshua overcame in the wilderness when the enemy came to him and said, if you be the son of God, you know, bow down and worship me. If you be the son of God, turn this bread into stone. If you be the son of God, throw yourself over him because the angels are going to catch you, you know, because you're so great and wonderful, right? And so we find out in that, in this experience, reasons that we are praying. And so it helps you to overcome temptations. Yes. What do you mean it's going to help me to overcome temptations? I don't even know what temptation I might be faced with, say, an hour from now. That's why you have to pray. <laughs> That's why you pray. And because you are prayed up, as we call it, because you have been in that space of prayer, I, I'll just tell you this, you know, people tell me many times, you're too transparent, you know, Prophet John Lewis, you, you're just, you can't just, you can't just tell people everything like that, but you know. That's just me. I, I have to like, kind of like make it real, you know, because, you know, we as a uh, FIFO ministry people, we there, I mean, we have challenges also. And, but I find out sometime, you know, I have gone from this prayer space here on a Thursday and had to go out and had to deal with some really, really negative attitude or even some racist people and stuff. And you know what? I did not react the way that had I not been in prayer, like say an hour or two earlier, and been praying in tongues, you know, stuff, you know, something might have come out of my mouth, you know, I'm not, I don't really cuss or swear or anything like that, but, uh, you know, I probably would have said something very harsh or something, you know, or gave some really hard looks 
or, you know, or whatever, because I've done that before, you know, as well as other things, right? But because of the prayer, because you're living in that, when the temptation comes to revert to uh, the flesh or the lower realms and stuff, you know, all at once, you don't revert, you know? You want wow, you know? You see that beautiful woman walking by and stuff, and, you know, part of you might want to say, wow, you know, and look and look too long and stuff, you know? You enjoy the beauty of God and everything and everywhere creation, but then you know when to like, okay, I've enjoyed enough, you know, seen enough. Had it already, you know. <laughs> I'm talking about overcoming, you know, people that may have had a problem with like uh, shoplifting and stuff. You stay in that place of prayer. All of us, you're in the store. No one is looking and stuff. Oh, you can take that. The thought comes to your mind and stuff, but because your life is changing because now, no, 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 I don't do that anymore. You know, so prayer. That's why Yeshua said, you know, pray, lead us not into temptation. Okay. So I just wanted to just bring it down to like real life. We could, you could put anything in the, in the blank there. I just gave you just some examples here. All right. So, uh, uh number seven, the reason why you need to pray is to change, um, uh, the situation, to change the situation, to change the situation. There are some things that we can pray about and we have demonstrated it here. We've even prophesied into not reveal like world events or things that's going to be happening and stuff. And it's been just clear as crystal and stuff. And I said, but we're going to change it. We're not going to allow it to fully manifest. What hours later, it comes out in the news days later, sometime weeks later, sometime maybe a month or so later, it comes out in the news just as the spirit said, but the full impact did not happen. You can look at your life and you can see that things that were going on in your life, uh, uh, and so they did not fully express or manifest. It was because of prayers. Okay. For example, you know, some of you that are on this uh, platform, uh, uh, the doctors had given you a really bad report. And some of you uh, that we know of for sure <laughs> that the, a part of this platform, they sent you home and told you that, well, you know, maybe a few months you will live or something like that. And, but you're gone, you're out of here and stuff. You know, they basically put you in hospice and stuff, but because of prayer, the situation was changed it was changed okay and so another thing prayer it doesn't really change the mind of god you know but it changes you it changes you it changes how you view things how you view things okay oh this goes right into number eight uh to experience miracles to experience miracles the supernatural so we pray we connect we communicate with spirit you know uh transcend in the physical limited realm so that we can connect with the fifth dimensional realm of supernatural spirit so that we can bring that which already is out from that invisible realm into this physical realm here the 3d world and we call it a miracle whether it is a miracle within your body because you know you really all heal you're really all whole there's no reason for anyone to die because your cells renew themselves and your body uh, replenishes itself, renews itself every seven years or so, right? So there's really uh, no need for all of that regarding the physical being and stuff, you know? It's just that we don't know it yet and we don't know how to incorporate this spiritual science into the physical body to cause all of that to cease and cause us to get into that place as we were saying of incorruptibility and uh, in immortality. So, uh, so it causes us to experience miracles, okay? It, it, it could be like that house that you wanted and maybe someone else put a bid on that house and so and maybe outbid it you for it but you really wanted it and you know that you wanted that house or that building and stuff and you went into prayer and all at once that whole thing fell through for the other person <laughs> Now, I'm just telling you, you have the power, you have the power and stuff, you know, when you know who you are and you can do things uh, like that. It could be that vehicle or it could be that job that, you know, maybe you weren't even qualified for the job, but you know that, that this is where spirit wants you. And so because of your prayer, people that are more qualified than you won't get chosen, but you'll get chosen because that prayer creates that covering of favor favor upon your life okay make it more real some of y'all may be looking for that man <laughs> or that woman you know that may already be like looking somewhere else and but you know that god has said that is yours and so that prayer can you know create a miracle for you all right now number nine uh to to create wisdom to to to, to get wisdom Okay, because uh, when you pray, you come into that communion with the Most High God. It brings you into a place where now you're no longer functioning out of human wisdom. 
which is sensuous, devilish, and filled with all types of impartialities. And uh, because we are seeing by the seeing of the human eye and we're judging by what we know and not what we don't know, okay? But when you pray, you transcend the realms uh, of, of sight, sound, taste, the five sense realm, all of that. And you're now tapping into super consciousness, the spirit of wisdom. And so now you can tap into that and you can bring forth the wisdom of God. Now you have the wisdom of God about that situation about whatever it is that you are concerned about and you can speak into that now matter of fact you can pray and declare and create from that space let me say that again because it's very powerful if you can get it okay you can look at a certain situation of what is going on and stuff you can judge it by human wisdom okay and uh, judge it by the natural sometimes we even judge people like oh i don't like the way she looked i don't like the way he looked oh, i don't like the way he you know you know i know there, there are people that's been here matter of fact even probably now this part they don't like my delivery so what get over it you know <laughs> and so you know and, and but because they're looking at the eye you know he looks like this he sounds like this or you know i don't know about this whatever you know and uh you know that's the human eye. but if you get into a space of prayer you transcend that and then you see from god's eyes and god's wisdom and so and you speak into things whether it is regarding a person in your life or, or something that you are looking at or going through okay and then so that is to gain wisdom okay and and that goes right on into like number uh 10 i believe that i was going to go into that to to gain uh, a different perspective a different perspective okay yeah uh you can have your uh perspective you can conceive how things appear in the realm of appearance to you and you can act and react from that but if you're in a space of prayer here's a story i use many times the uh shulamite woman her son was dead, okay? The son was dead. No breath, he's dead, he's dying. He, I mean, he's turning uh, blue, he's uh, or black or something, and, and he's cold. But because of her prayer, she said, it is well, it is well, it is well, it is well. Look at Mary Martha there at the tomb, you know? And she finally says that, you know, if you had been here, then I know our brother wouldn't die. But even now, <laughs> Let me just read that to you so I won't misquote it and I'm going to stop here. Uh, she said this, um, is that John 11, I believe? Yeah, 11. And so she said, okay, all right. Let me just read this for you because it's powerful so that you can understand and understand the power of prayer. Okay. 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 Now, Jesus, uh, uh, this is verse 23 of John 11. It says, Martha said to him, um, I know that he should rise at, again at the last day, the day of the resurrection. Yeshua said to her, I am the resurrection. It's not just an event, it's a person, all right? It's an experience. I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believes and continues to believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and this living and continue to believe, he shall never die. Somebody shout immortality. You know, you can believe into this so strongly, get so filled with the work with spirit that the flesh cannot die. Back to the corruption thing. The flesh will not corrupt. Okay, the aging process will reverse. All of that. All right. She said unto him, Yeah, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who should come into the world. And when he and when she had thus said, uh, she went on her way. So she went on, she 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 went from saying, if you had been here, and then, well, okay, now I know that, you know, that you are the one, and that whatever you say, it can happen. And then Yeshua went uh, to the uh, tomb there, and he called him forth. And my point was that her whole per perspective changed. That interaction with Yeshua changed her whole perspective that from, if you had been here he wouldn't die oh one day in the future he's going to be resurrected to right now right now i can have this experience so those are just 10 little uh, reasons why uh, uh we should pray and we should uh call out to god and experience uh his presence and his power in these things here and uh i went quite long longer than what i really expected uh to do here but i thank you for being here now if if there's anyone anyone on the platform you're gonna have to raise your hand quickly 